guys, thanks for being here. Today I wanted to do a video on a new lip product that really excites me. The whole line I think is just very, very compelling and I do get sent a lot of products really, you know, full lines of lip products here and there or foundations or blushes or you name it. Simply because that happens, it doesn't mean I'm jumping up and down about whatever I got just for the fact that it was sent to me. These I tried and it was like love at first application. I've got to say they truly knock my socks off. So I'm talking about the NARS Velvet Lip Glide. I've got all 13 shades right here and I've kind of got them popped out of the packaging so I can more easily grab for them. But in this video, I'm going to try them all on for you. Um, try to give you my best description of how these feel on the lips because I'll be honest, when I first got them, I thought, okay, NARS has some sort of liquid lipstick out. You know, it's going to be drying. I just had these preconceived notions of what was going to happen on my lips with these. And then I tried the first one on and I was like, oh, this is something different. It's really like a lip cream in the truest sense of the word. Before we got it in our heads that, you know, matte lip products are supposed to have this dry down and not go anywhere and be super long wearing, these are truly a creamy lip product that is very opaque. They're not a gloss, though there is a little bit of very natural shine when you first apply them. They've got all the comfort of a creamy lipstick and also the precision and application that you might get from a really nice wand applicator. Something else I've noticed about these is you also get the hydration level that a lot of more creamy classic lipsticks might give you, but in terms of staying power, you have that long wear of a stain. So it's not like you've got a thick layer of product just kind of sitting there on your lips throughout the day and it may or may not flake off with certain things that you do or eat. In all of my experiences wearing these, I have had a very even, like, sort of staining effect underneath them all. So as you've heard me describe these, you've probably heard elements of all kinds of lip products. You know, that little bit of shine that a gloss might have, the creaminess of a lipstick, the uh, staying power of a stain. It's really an impressive combination and something I'm excited to see come out this time of year because especially now I feel like my lips are already starting to feel a little more dry. There's just more dryness in the air. And while I really like the matte look, I'm not wanting something that's going to give me the matte feel necessarily. Necessarily. And so these just feel so smooth and creamy after you apply them. The hint of natural shine that I'm talking about, I mean, can you see it on my lips? Just a little bit, little bit of shine. But with just an hour or so of wear, I feel like even that small amount of shine kind of calms down a little bit. And for the most part, you're feeling like you've got this kind of matte finish on the lips, but it still feels extremely creamy. And the hardest part of these lip products to explain is the application. They're called Velvet Lip Glide, and I think that is a wonderful title, wonderful name for these, because they go on with such ease. They don't feel goopy, sticky, thick, like like a gloss you might apply with a wand applicator. They're just smooth and really soft without feeling dry at all. The way they're described, it says they're laced with NARS Oil Infusion Complex. This hybrid lip color combines the fluidity and effortlessness of a gloss with the coverage and comfort of a lipstick. Wanted to give you a good look at the applicator here. I love these flattened out doe foot applicators because they tend to hold some product a little bit toward the center and the tip. And it seems like with a lot of products that have this style of doe foot, the edges end up being really nicely cleaned off when you take it out of the tube. And I think that allows you to get right out to the edge of your lips without gooping on too much product at the outer edges of your lips. And especially with some darker shades that I'm going to mention, I think it's very important not to over apply this product. And now I want to focus in on the colors because there are some great colors. I've sort of divided them up into soft. I've got like four shades that I would call the softer end of the spectrum, um, about five shades that I would classify as bright, and then four shades that are very deep. First shade is stripped. This is described as beige pink. This is the only one in the selection that I feel like is a little bit sheer. I feel like I am seeing just a little bit of my natural lip through that shade. 
Moving on to Unlaced. This one, more peachy, more opaque. It's described as nude pink. There's definitely some warmth in this color, and I really, really like it. Next up, we've got Playpen. I think I know why it was called Playpen, because this is a safe color. It's very easy to wear. It's a pink coral. It's soft, but it's still giving you that little hint of color to play with without going too crazy bold if that's not what you're into. Next up, we've got Bound. To me, I think of it as a true mauve. Um, I sometimes think of these shades as winter pink as well because they don't have that cotton candy brightness that some other shades do, but it's just a very, very wearable shade. Um, definitely one of my favorites of the whole collection. Now we're going to round the corner into the bright shades. Like I said, I've got uh, five shades that I would put in this category, several of which are reds, but the first couple are kind of like berry pinks. So Danceteria is described as fuchsia on my handout. Um, I would call it a true hot pink. You know, it's kind of what I envision when I think of a hot pink color. Very full color, easy to apply, not at all streaky. Then if you're liking that feel but you want a little more depth, um, La Main Blue is described as rich berry. I do think this is a great fall berry that still incorporates a little brightness. We are going to get into some deeper shades soon, but I just love um, the little bit of purple thrown into this shade. Definitely a favorite. Mine Shaft, which they call a poppy red, is very warm. I sense a lot of orange in this shade. To me, it feels like a very summery red, although I know there are certain skin tones, certain people who would love to wear this kind of red all year round. Then the shade called number 54, they call raspberry red, and this seems like that true, bold, glam red. You you know, it's a little more of a neutral red compared to the last one, and I think it's just beautiful, and it really makes a statement. It's definitely bright. La Palace, they call a deep cherry red, and this is slightly deeper than the last couple, and I think there's just a hint of brick in this color, and I think it's probably the most wearable red. Just a gorgeous shade and a teeny step down in brightness from number 54. Now we're going to get into the deep dark family. Um, I've got four shades that I would put in in this category. Uh, the first one is Unspeakable, and that is the one that I've been wearing throughout the video. It, they call this Garnet. It really is a dark berry, and I find as this shade wears, I start to see a little more of a pinky berry come through. But it's so beautiful, a really gorgeous shade. With this shade and every shade to come, I think it's important not to apply too much, um, especially like this next color, Toy. This is a really deep, dark wine color, and some of these dark shades can look streaky if you get too much product on your lips. So try to keep it at a minimum. I don't find myself needing to really dip back into the tube. Sometimes dabbing your lips together is enough to get a good product spread and then just even it out with the applicator. Then we've got Area for those of you who like a dark brown. This they call Rich Chestnut. Definitely different for me. I do not wear this kind of shade often, but I really, really like it. I think that would be a fun fall and winter color to play with. And then Deviant, which this shade is exclusive to NARS Boutique and NarsCosmetics.com. They call this Deep Burgundy. It really seems to me like a brick and berry mix. When I first started putting it on my lips, I thought, oh, that's true brick red. But then as I could see it kind of spreading out, I thought it's kind of got some berry in there as well, but a beautiful shade. So as you guys just saw, tons of variety in this line, all the way from the lightest nudes into bright colors and extremely dark colors as well. And as far as staying power goes, I am going to kind of do some check-ins on this shade so you can see how a darker color wears. It has been on for about four hours. Um, definitely has worn down a little bit color-wise, but there still feels like there's moisture on my lips. My lips have, are definitely not feeling dry. What you're seeing now is eight and a half hours of wear, no touch-ups. Um, basically, I'm not feeling moisture on my lips anymore, but this is just like an even stain. I think it's pretty even looking, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. I haven't been babying the situation too much. I've eaten breakfast and lunch. I've had coffee. I've had water, juice, whatever. So if you wanted the purest color, you know, you would touch it up, obviously. But I'm just showing you how one of the deeper shades wears. No feathering outside my lip line. And overall, I would say it faded in a pretty even way. So I'm impressed. Before, I kept really close track of Playpen, which was the pinky coral. And I had actually done some lip swatches on Snapchat one morning, and I really 
really watched that one closely throughout the day. I could see the staining effect happening by about midday. And then past that point, and keep in mind this was a lighter color. It didn't have quite as much intensity on the lips. It started to just kind of fade down past the midday point. Good thing about these products is, as I said, they're not like a straight up layer of film kind of going across your lips. They are a creamy lip product with some emollient qualities. So you will find like if you feel the need for a little touch up, you can do that and you're not feeling an uncomfortable thickness on your lips like you might if you are applying more product on top of a dried down liquid lipstick. Trust me, I've been there. It does not feel pleasant. So again, a really impressive, really unique line of lip products. They are going to run you $26 a piece. I'm not sure if there's going to be a holiday set that comes out that involves these. If there is, I would certainly jump on that. But I would also consider one or two of these as like a real great luxury splurge or gift idea for the upcoming coming holiday season because they are just tremendous. And this is coming from a person who is very, very like obsessed with a lip products feel. The experience of putting it on, the way it continues to wear over a period of hours, that means a lot to me. I can get easily annoyed by the feel of certain lip products. I can tolerate some if I love the color, but these are just a supremely comfortable feel and it's great going into drier seasons, drier months where our skin and our lips dry out more. I would like to point out my top five from this line. Um, from the lighter group, I would say my favorite cup are unlaced. That was the nude that wasn't the sheerest, the first one I tried on, but a little bit more of a peachy nude. I really like that one, and I like Bound a lot as well, which is that pretty mauve shade. I think so many people are going to be attracted to this color as a wearable shade that really looks good under so many circumstances. In the Bright family, I loved Le Main Blue, and this was that rich berry that I said was kind of like a fall berry, but still has some brightness to it. A little bit of a purpley thing coming out in this as well. I think that's so gorgeous. And La Palace, which I thought was the most wearable of the three brighter red shades that I tried on. And then from the darker family, I have been wearing my favorite from that selection and it's unspeakable sort of toward the lighter end of those final four shades that I tried on but so so pretty and I think it's just a great fall and holiday type shade and I'm sorry if I've been looking down a lot I've got notes all over this little chart here and I've just been trying to stay on track but thank you guys so much for watching I hope this video sorted out any questions you may have about these new Velvet Glide lip products from NARS I really appreciate your time spent with me here on YouTube and I will talk to you soon. Bye.